a tax break, not just for this year, but for the last three. Tonight on Channel 4 News at 6, working for you. Is government waste pushing your button? Click the hot button at WSMV.com to tell us about it. On the broadcast tonight, prime time, record numbers of homeowners are in default on their mortgages. And it's not just subprime loans to blame as job losses take their toll. Finish line, big developments for General Motors and Chrysler with America's auto industry undergoing fast and dramatic change. Setting limits, new health guidelines, and how much weight some pregnant women can safely gain. And up in arms, a ban on high school hugs. Why all the fuss about the latest way kids are saying hello? Nightly News begins now. From NBC News World Headquarters in New York, this is NBC Nightly News with Brian Williams. Hello, everyone. I'm Lester Holt in tonight for Brian Williams. There is a new face of a home mortgage crisis in this country. Lately, more and more people with good credit, people who took out fixed interest loans, not those risky subprime packages, are losing their homes to foreclosure. We learned today a record 12 percent of homeowners are either falling behind on their house payments or are in foreclosure as the pain of a prolonged recession continues to spread. From Washington tonight, with more on what's behind that trend, we're joined by CNBC's Diana Ola. Good evening, Diana. Good evening, Lester. A new report out today shows the face of foreclosure is changing. A different breed of borrower caught in the consequences of recession. Can you briefly just describe to me what caused your financial situation? There is a noticeable change at Atlanta's Consumer Credit Counseling Service. We're getting calls from engineers and attorneys and postgraduate students. Because for the first time, prime fixed rate loans have leapfrogged those risky exotic subprimes in the race to foreclosure. And many of these people um, run through their 401ks and their savings and start living off credit cards and then they call a counseling agency for help. A sign of these weak economic times, a new survey shows the number of all loans past due in the U.S. reaching a new record high in the first quarter of this year, despite aggressive government and industry programs to modify mortgages. When we look at cases where people are simply out of work, there's nothing there that, that can be modified or uh, worked out if, if they don't have a job. And as home prices plummet, now down over 15 percent from a year ago, more borrowers are walking away. Mortgage giant Freddie Mac estimates 40 percent of their delinquent borrowers are gone, the empty homes left behind. Most of the pain is centered in the four states where prices rose the highest during the housing boom. These states represent nearly half of the nation's foreclosures. But as job losses nationwide mount, so too will the number of troubled loans. And to add insult to injury, this week mortgage rates unexpectedly jumped half a percent. The government is borrowing a lot of money to fund the budget deficits, and that's driven up borrowing costs for everyone. For consumers, that means higher mortgage rates. Despite the jump this week, mortgage rates are still historically low, but not as low as some say they need to be to stimulate a real recovery. The other concern is, what if rates continue to rise? That could take away some of that newfound affordability that is currently the one bright spot in today's housing market. Lester. Diana Olick tonight. Diana, thanks. Now to the U.S. auto industry, where developments are coming fast and furious tonight. Chrysler was back in court today, and General Motors continues on its path to an expected bankruptcy filing next week. For the latest on what this could mean for the companies and their customers, CNBC's Phil LeBeau joins me now from Chicago. Phil, GM says it's worked out a deal to give its biggish bondholders a bigger share in a reorganized company. Would that mean a shortened bankruptcy, and is that good for consumers? Well, that's the hope, Lester. This certainly should clear the path for General Motors to have a quicker, smoother bankruptcy. And the reason that's important is because the less time General Motors spends in bankruptcy, the less questions or the fewer questions that are raised with consumers as they drive by dealerships. They will have more confidence if GM gets out of bankruptcy sooner. And that's what they're hoping at the Treasury Department, a bankruptcy as quick as what we're seeing with Chrysler. Chrysler, I know, already in bankruptcy. They were in court today. Some developments there. What can you report? 
Well, Chrysler is on the verge of having its sale to Fiat approved. It could come tomorrow, could come by Monday of next week. The bottom line is this. Within a week and a half or so, Chrysler, the new Chrysler, will be out of bankruptcy, and that's good news for all of those dealers that the company is keeping because it's one less question for the people who are out there looking at a Dodge, a Jeep, or a Chrysler. All right, Phil, thanks for putting it all in perspective for us tonight. Wall Street shook off yesterday's worries, and stocks finished the day higher. The Dow was up almost 104 points. Speaking in Los Angeles last night, President Obama declared the U.S. has stepped back from the brink in the economic crisis, and he credited the $787 billion stimulus bill he signed 100 days before. So far, about $112 billion worth of programs and projects have been approved, and the Obama administration says about 150,000 jobs have been saved or created. Our investigative correspondent, Lisa Myers, is watching how the money is being spent and reports tonight on the ripple effect a project can have. It's the first stimulus project greenlighted in the country, replacing this crumbling bridge over the Osage River in rural central Missouri. Critics dubbed it a bridge to the middle of nowhere. But in struggling Miller County, that $8.5 million bridge means jobs. The company run by Kevin Helton and his dad was hired to dig out a new road to the bridge. Ten workers right here for this area right here. It was people who was uh, on unemployment and it helped bring them out on unemployment and get them started back in the workforce. Mike Versoulis was one of 20 workers hired by another company to build the bridge itself. He'd been unemployed five months. The opportunities weren't there. I, I would have went to work. I looked every, every week. It just nothing there to do, so it was waiting game. It's also meant at least eight more jobs at a nearby steel mill. And that all translates into more business up the road at the Red Oak Inn. Guys doing the dirt work eat two, one or two meals a day here. A few days they'd eat three. Wes Horton says the community needs the help. Our president commented on television here a while back that the people in New York ought to go to the Midwest and live where they live on 75,000. He ought to come to Miller County where they live on 30,000. Based on a formula, federal and state officials estimate that 240 jobs will be saved or created by the bridge project. But those estimates seem very unlikely. And while it may be possible to count jobs created, figuring out how many jobs are saved is an imprecise science. In fact, at DeLong's, where the steel bones for the bridge are made, Workers had hoped for much more from the stimulus. Well, uh, we've been somewhat disappointed. It was a good first move, but it needs to be followed up uh, by an expansion in the private and public sector. Even though it's not as much as advertised, federal money is stirring hope where there hasn't been much. Lisa Myers, NBC News, Washington. The White House said today President Obama is very comfortable that Supreme Court nominee Judge Sonia Sotomayor shares his interpretation of the Constitution. But spokesman Robert Gibbs says the president did not specifically ask her about the right to privacy, a key issue in the abortion debate. NBC News Justice correspondent Pete Williams is in Washington now with more on all this. Pete, good evening. Lester, ever since the Supreme Court decided Roe v. Wade 36 years ago, a nominee's view on abortion has been the dominant issue, but with this nominee, it's a mystery. It's a Both sides on the abortion issue agree on this. They're eager to know exactly what Sonia Sotomayor thinks about abortion and the Constitution. It is important that we not have a guessing game when we're talking about a justice who's going to take a seat on a court that was 5-4 in its last abortion decisions. Judge Sotomayor has never ruled on the question directly, though she has decided cases involving abortion, rejecting a challenge to the Bush administration's policy of cutting off funds to foreign groups that perform abortions, ruling against New York teachers over a requirement that they notify parents whose daughters look pregnant, and voting in favor of the right of anti-abortion protesters to sue police for using excessive force against them. The White House today said President Obama never asked Judge Sotomayor about abortion, but that he satisfied her views agree with his. I think he feels, I know he feels comfortable with where she is. It's a familiar presidential dance. George W. Bush insisted in 2005 that he avoided the same question. In my interviews with any judge, I never asked their personal opinion on the subject of abortion. 
As for conservative criticism of President Obama for saying he wants a nominee with empathy for people caught up in court fights, liberal groups today said Justice Samuel Alito seemed to express a similar sentiment during his confirmation hearing. When I get a case about discrimination, um, I have to think about people in my own family who, who suffered discrimination because of their ethnic background or because of religion or, or because of gender. Uh, and, and I do take that into account. Judge Sotomayor starts her one-on-one -on -one meetings with senators next week when they get back into town. So far, just one Republican has said that he will vote against her. That's Pat Roberts of Kansas, Lester. And, and Pete, what do we know about the timing of her confirmation hearings? Well, they're still trying to work that out. Some people from the White House met with congressional staff today. The Republicans want as long as they can to go through her record. The Democrats want to get her confirmation done so she can be in the Supreme Court when it starts the first Monday in October. And that was the whole point of David Souter telling the White House early so that they could get an early start on this process because his recollection was that it was a big panic for him trying to get up to speed when he came on the Supreme Court after the term had already started. He's anxious to avoid that happening to his successor. Listen. All right, Pete Williams tonight. Pete, thanks very much. The White House announced today President Obama will host the next G20 Economic Summit on September 24th and 25th in Pittsburgh. A spokesman says the president wants to highlight the recovery the city has been making during the tough economic times. Meantime, after meeting with Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu last week, the president met this afternoon with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas. Mr. Obama said Israel must stop expanding West Bank settlements and the Palestinians must rein in anti-Israel violence. And on another important issue, President Obama said today if Congress doesn't deliver health care legislation this year, the opportunity will be lost. He was speaking to political supporters by telephone from Air Force One as he flew home from his trip to the West Coast. There's a lot more to talk about tonight when Nightly News continues on this Thursday evening new guidelines on weight gain in pregnancy, reflecting a new reality in our society. And later, what's wrong with a friendly hug? Well, some school officials say there's more to this than meets the eye. If you purchased Bextra and or Celebrex on or before July 29, 2005, you could get money back from a class action settlement fund. The lawsuit claims that consumers paid more for Bextra and or Celebrex than for comparable pain relievers. Call 1-800-547-9360. That's 1-800-547-9360 or visit BextraCelebrexSettlement.com for information on your legal rights and filing a claim. Before they give you the lowest price, some pharmacies make you work for it with memberships and fees. But not Walmart. They have hundreds of generic prescriptions for just $4 for up to a 30-day supply or $10 for 90 days. Save money, live better. Walmart. You take Beano at a different time than when you take these gas relievers. You take Beano before your first bite of food so you don't get gas. You take these once you notice you have gas. And let's just hope you're the first to notice. Take Beano before and there'll be no gas. a history of smoking and breathing problems, it could be COPD, which includes chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or both. Discover Spiriva, the only once daily inhaled maintenance prescription that treats both forms of COPD. Spiriva significantly improves lung function to help you breathe better for a full 24 hours, and it's not a steroid. Spiriva does not replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms. Stop taking Spiriva and call your doctor if your breathing suddenly worsens, your throat or tongue swells, you get hives or have vision changes or eye pain. Tell your doctor if you have glaucoma, problems passing urine or an enlarged prostate as these may worsen with Spiriva. Also discuss the medicines you take, even eye drops. Side effects may include dry mouth, constipation and trouble passing urine. So make a habit of breathing better with Spiriva. Friday. She was close to the Lord. I believe that he convinced her that she was going to die. You're describing a fairly diabolical plot. I know I didn't kill my wife. A new two-hour dateline, Friday, 9, 8 central on NBC. Sunday, will the president's first Supreme Court nominee touch off a battle on the Hill? Judiciary Committee leaders start the debate, exclusive only on Meet the Press. 
There is important new information tonight concerning pregnancy and weight gain. Federal health officials have issued the first new guidelines in nearly two decades. We get details from our chief science correspondent, Robert Bazell. Okay, Rena, go ahead and step up on the scale. Rena Gelada is seven months pregnant and has gained 25 pounds. That's a bit more than normal for seven months, but good for her because she was very thin to start with. Her obstetrician, Dr. Anna Sanchez, says that these days the opposite is much more common and dangerous. Far too many women are overweight or obese even before they get pregnant. Women that are overweight when they start a pregnancy, and two-thirds of American women are overweight when they start a pregnancy, they should gain just 10 to 20 pounds. That is why the Institute of Medicine has come up with new guidelines about weight gain during pregnancy. Women of normal weight, which is determined by body mass index, should gain from 25 to 35 pounds during pregnancy. Underweight women can gain more, up to 40 pounds. Overweight women should limit weight gain to 25 pounds. And for obese women, a new range, reflecting a heavier population, limits their weight gain to 11 to 20 pounds. The health of a newborn depends a lot on the mom's weight. A heavy mom is more likely to need a C-section, and her weight puts the baby at risk for many other complications. Of course, it is not easy for anyone to limit food intake, especially a pregnant woman. It's hard to lose this weight after you deliver. Uh, as somebody that's had three kids, I can tell you, it's a lot easier to gain the weight during the pregnancy than it is to, to lose it afterward. Nikki Shalliott gave birth to her third son, Brody, yesterday at St. Joseph Hospital in Orange, California. She says the weight control got easier with each pregnancy. I have two other kids at home, so running around after them, that keeps me pretty active. Her blood pressure but experts say far more women need to limit their food intake while pregnant for the sake of their children's health. Robert Bazell, NBC News, Orange County, California. There was a powerful earthquake that rocked Central America today. It toppled dozens of homes in Honduras and Belize. Authorities say at least six people were killed and at least 40 others were injured. That quake had a magnitude of 7.1. A tropical depression has formed off the mid-Atlantic states. It's the first one of the 2009 Atlantic hurricane season, which officially begins Monday. Forecasters say the depression could grow into a tropical storm overnight. However, it is not expected to threaten land. When nightly news continues in just a moment, a good job is hard to find, and young job hunters are facing some much more experienced competition. When my wife started forgetting things, the doctor said it could be Alzheimer's. I didn't want to believe it, but that night at the bowling alley... Where's Alice? Oh, there she is. She seems a little confused. That's when I knew. I couldn't wait. Our doctor told us prescription Aricept is the only treatment proven effective for all stages of Alzheimer's. Studies showed Aricept slows the progression of symptoms. It improves cognition and slows the decline of overall function. Aricept is well tolerated, but not for everyone. People at risk for stomach ulcers or who take certain other medicines should tell their doctors because serious stomach problems such as bleeding may get worse. Some people may experience fainting. Some people may have nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, bruising, or not sleep well. Some people may have muscle cramps or loss of appetite or may feel tired. In studies, these were usually mild and temporary. We really love this place. Talk to your doctor about Alzheimer's treatments, including Aricept. Don't wait. Alzheimer's isn't waiting. And your paste can feel oozy. Yuck! But C-Bond adhesive wafers have no paste to use. Give C-Bond a try. Bye-bye, ooze. Hello, C-Bond. time get your double my bucks certificate at cvs pharmacy or at cvs.com so you can earn double extra bucks every time you purchase a prescription hi cvs pharmacy pays you back and these days everybody could use a few extra bucks there you go thanks hey honey hmm? did you know that they yeah i know thanks cvs pharmacy for all the ways you care is the jar more beautiful than the results not in this case Neutrogena Ageless Intensives Anti-Wrinkle with Retinol SA smooths even deep wrinkles. So choose. Beautiful in the jar or in the mirror. Announcing the Ford Advantage Plan. A better plan to get you into a new, quality-built Ford, Lincoln, or Mercury. Today, while others say there's no credit available, Ford Credit says there is. 
financing as low as 0% APR. Check for pre-approval at Ford.com. And with the Ford Advantage, if you lose your paycheck, we'll make your payments for up to 12 months. Quality, credit, and payment protection. That's the Ford Advantage plan. Visit your Ford or Lincoln Mercury dealer today. Live from London, Meredith's backstage on Britain's Got Talent. And in New York, a royal visit from Prince Harry. Tomorrow on Today on NBC. Nightly News at nightly.msnbc.com. More on the economy and jobs now. The number of Americans filing for unemployment benefits for the first time eased by 13,000 last week to 623,000. But the number receiving benefits on an ongoing basis hit a record for the 17th week in a row at just under 6.8 million. The tough job market has, of course, led to fierce competition, pitting younger job seekers against rivals who might be old enough to be their parents. Here's CNBC's Trish Regan. When Carlos George retired from his job as a TSA screener four years ago, he thought he was out of the workforce for good. That's it. I'll see you later. But with expenses creeping higher, the 64-year-old needed a weekly paycheck again. I had to change my career, basically. I started over again. Instead of being a manager, I'm a driver. With the cost of living rising and retirement savings dwindling, millions of older workers like Carlos are re-entering the workforce, often at the expense of their younger counterparts. Today, younger workers are facing more competition than ever. Despite a growing population, the number of Americans under 30 in the workforce has dropped by nearly 3 million since the start of the recession in December 2007. At the same time, the number of workers over 55 has increased by almost a million. Mason Jackson, CEO of Workforce One, a job training and employment center in Fort Lauderdale, says employers often prefer older workers for entry-level positions. They're finding the work ethic is better. They're finding that skills are, are there, especially professionalism, customer service kinds of skills, the ability to handle sensitive situations. But labor economists warn fewer opportunities for young people could have serious consequences. By not working today, we're giving up future work experience. We're giving up future employability that will impose costs upon all of us. This is getting frustrating. 26-year-old Nikki Myers, laid off from the local historical society, is hoping her youth may still give her an edge. I'm looking to go to a job that I can stay and grow with the company. So I hope that, you know, a future employer would see that as an advantage. How are you? What's your day? Meanwhile, 15 months looking for his job, Carlos George isn't planning to stay home with his grandchildren anytime soon. The situation looking forward in the next five, ten years, I'd rather stay in the workforce. An increasing challenge for Americans of all ages. Trish Regan, CNBC, New York. The once highly touted corporate marriage between media titan Time Warner and internet giant AOL has ended in divorce. Time Warner announced it will spin off AOL as a separate company and move on with life as a movie, TV, and publishing conglomerate. They merged in 2001, but AOL's internet access business began fading and hope for advertising revenue never materialized. The town of Winner, South Dakota has lived up to its name. The winning ticket from last night's $232 million Powerball jackpot was sold there. There's late word from lottery officials that an apparent winner has come forward, but they gave no further details about them. The National Archives has a new prize tonight, a letter written by President Abraham Lincoln to help the fired director of the U.S. Mint in San Francisco. The president had appointed the Mint director as a favor to a Republican senator. The letter was donated by a private collector. It's dated November 14, 1863. That's five days before Lincoln delivered his famous Gettysburg Address. When we come back, why some schools in this country are putting the squeeze on hugs. I have COPD, which makes it hard to breathe. But now that I'm breathing better with Advair, I can enjoy the zoo with my grandkids. For people with COPD, including chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or both, great news. Advair helps significantly improve lung function. While nothing can reverse COPD, Advair is different from most other medications because it contains both an anti-inflammatory and a long-acting bronchodilator working together to help you breathe better. Advair won't replace fast-acting inhalers for sudden symptoms and should not be used more than twice a day. People with COPD taking Advair may have a higher chance of pneumonia. 
Advair may increase your risk of osteoporosis and some eye problems. Tell your doctor if you have a heart condition or high blood pressure before taking Advair. We had a great day, Grandpa. <laughs> we sure did. Ask your doctor how Advair helps improve lung function for better breathing. Find out how to get your first full prescription free at AdvairCOPD.com. It's a revolution in pain relief. The new Icy Hot Medicated Roll. Take what you need for shoulders, backs, joints, even arthritis. Medicated Relief gets icy to dull pain, hot to relax it away. The new Icy Hot Medicated Roll. With the roll, pain's under control. What's worse, mosquitoes or mosquito spray? Hmm. Huh. Introducing off-clip-on repellent. Lab tests show this new sprayless repellent really repels. In minutes, its fan surrounds you with proven off protection. Wherever you're sitting. So don't spray it on, clip it on. On a table, chair, anywhere. New off clip on keeps bugs off. I see Johnson, a family company. Prescription drug prices. Everyone's talking about them. But now we can actually do something about them. At Walmart, their prices are unbeatable. Over 300 prescriptions are just $4. Four dollars. Imagine that. Save money. Live better. Walmart. You know, I sell tools. Tools are uncomplicated. Nothing complicated about a pair of 10-inch hose clamp pliers. You know what's complicated? Shipping. Shipping's complicated. Not really. With priority mail flat rate boxes from the Postal Service, shipping's easy. If it fits, it ships anywhere in the country for a low flat rate. That's not complicated. No. Come on. But, uh... Right here, right here. <laughs> Priority mail flat rate boxes, only from the Postal Service. A simpler way to ship. Coming up on Channel 4 News, why some Tennessee farmers could be forced to return a tax break. Not just for this year, but for the last three. Tonight on Channel 4 News at 6, working for you. Is government waste pushing your button? Click the hot button at WSMV.com to tell us about it. Finally tonight, when you were a teenager, how did you greet your friends? A handshake? A high five? A simple hello? Well now, hugging is apparently all the rage. It's a topic we explored in partnership with the New York Times, which had a front page article today. Here's NBC's Chris Jansing. Who would have thought that such a seemingly simple greeting could spark so much controversy? I think it's silly and ridiculous. Every generation had its own way to say hey. In 2009, it's this. Hugging is just an acceptable embrace for lots of kids now. I think it's sort of like, you know, it's like the high five back in the 80s. In Reno, Nevada, hug is both the name of the high school and part of its culture. For guys to hug, handshake is just a sign of like brotherhood and yeah. you know, being close, being bonded. For girls, it's a sign of respect for them. It's just the fact that like you get closer to your friends that way. In schools around America, hugging has become a rapidly expanding phenomenon. Kids, in particular teenagers and adults, look to popular culture for scripts in terms of how to act. Even the toughest, most macho, hyper-masculine men like 50 Cent are shown hugging their buddies. Uh, and so hugging becomes socially acceptable then. Hugging's gotten so popular there are names for it. The traditional bear hug, guys seem to prefer the bump hug, and growing in popularity is the triple hug. But at some schools now there's just one word for hugging, and it's stop. We want hugs! Students at Shepherd Junior High in Phoenix protested after the school adopted a no hugging policy. Schools in Oregon, New Jersey, and Connecticut have banned or put time limits on hugging even getting front page attention from the New York Times. I think it, ra it does raise interesting issues and I think especially for the school administrators who are sort of trying to navigate this this massive amount of hugging. But Hug High has no such concern. I'm glad that they can be fr that close friends with each other and with us too. We've worked hard to establish this this really warm environment and I like it. A new generation of teenagers embracing the hug. Chris Jansing, NBC News, Reno. And that's our broadcast for this Thursday night. Thank you for being with us. I'm Lester Holt. We hope to see you right back here tomorrow evening. Good night.
teams with Jesse Ventura to lay the smack down on waterboarding supporters. Countdown with Keith Oberman, tonight only on MSNBC. Working for you in high definition, this is Channel 4 News. Good evening and welcome to Channel 4 News at 6. The property assessor is cracking down tonight and it's catching some landowners by surprise. He's going after those who've been getting a tax break for years but might not be legitimately entitled to it. Now some folks are finding out they owe thousands in back taxes. Channel 4's Deanna Lambert has the story. We just like being in the country. Robin Bain and her husband moved to their house on Hill Road five years ago. They bought the 37 and a half acres in Rutherford County more than 10 years ago. It was zoned agricultural, meaning they received a tax break under the Greenbelt Law established in 1976. Well, we do hay. My husband does hay. He cuts hay every year. At one point, this room was stacked full of bundled hay. Over the years, the Bains have sold a lot, but apparently 